So here's an update on my meat birds for 2023. As a little refresher, I purchased or ordered 125 roosters to be raised as meat. The only ones that I've been able to identify so far are the barred rocks, the white and black speckled looking birds. There are brown and blacks, brown and whites, and maybe a different black and white that I don't know yet. But today is their first day in a little tiny pasture. I'm working on trying to figure out how to keep these little buggers fed and watered and taken care of. And I'm realizing that my chicken tractor is still going to happen, but possibly not this meat bird season, or if so, it'll be later. They've taken to living in a greenhouse quite well. It was a wild, wild jungle on the floor in there, and they have trampled it down to nothing in maybe a matter of a week and a half. So I'm going to work on building a pasture fence cage system so they can just be indoor or outdoor whenever they would like. And then I'll build a larger fence system outside of that so whenever I'm around or the family's around, we can open the door and let them pasture. And that's not ideal for the chicken tractor idea, but it's still better than living in a cage. It's still better than just getting feed to them every day. They can still peck and scratch and dig and do all their things. So these are the brave few of the, there are 128 chickens and six geese still in here. And, uh, and they're slowly coming out and realizing that there are greener pastures on the other side of that wall. Come on, goosey goosey. I know I've spent a lot of my time and attention towards the geese lately and the chickens are just kind of there. And I haven't really done a chicken update. Um, last, last I did update, they were still in the brooder box and they were pecking each other's butts real bad. And they weren't pecking vents, they were pecking above where the tail feathers were coming out. And so I knew they were bored, I knew they needed more space. So I took them out of the brooder box and put them in this greenhouse and they've been doing quite well. And like I said, they've just mowed down the jungle in there. They've been finding worms every day, doing all their things. and. I tend to leave wood around so I can flip it over once in a while and there's a whole pile of worms right there as soon as they find them. They're going to do their thing. They're scratching, picking, finding, eating, doing a good job at that. I do want to say as far as the, the whole sales and marketing thing, there's a reason that like at the World's Fair in Chicago back in the 1800s that the loud people made the sales. The people that advertised and marketed the best made the sales. That's why sales and marketing is such a big business inside of any actual business. You can have all the quality you want, but if you're not selling it, it's not gonna sell. You can have terrible quality and a great sales and marketing department and make enough sales to deal with the bad quality. And the reason I'm saying this is I am finding out that this really good deal on dual purpose roosters is coming to bite me in the buttocks. I paid $1.50 for each one of these birds and the idea of meat birds is that they are bred for massive meat growth, fast turnaround, and in uh, a good quality when you're done, okay? We're looking at like nine to 10 weeks for meat birds. These roosters are going to be four or five months. 
So instead of a month and a half, we're looking at all summer long. And that's fine by me. And I saved money buying these roosters. And now I'm coming to find out that any processor that is willing to process these roosters is going to pay, or I'm going to have to pay more. And apparently they don't clean as easy as meat birds. They don't pluck as easy as meat birds. They don't clean out all of the insides as easy as meat birds. So any money I'm saving on my initial startup is not really coming to fruition on the entire idea. Now, being able to pasture them is definitely going to help with food costs. But as far as my time and energy and my constant feeding and watering and my electric bill for ventilating that, which I'm gonna have to get into better ventilation systems, uh, that all adds up. And, you know, live and learn. But sales and marketing really got me on this one. And they said, yeah, they, you know, they grow up just the same as a meat bird at the end. They might be a little bit lighter, but they taste just as good. And I hope they do. I hope they do taste great. But come to find out, the, the cheaper upfront price is not really any bit of savings in the end. So there's still a select few that have decided that outdoor living is the way to go. And they definitely found the little worm pile. That's pretty cool. It's fun to watch them just figure things out. But I did show a little clip of when they moved into this house and how jungly it was. And now it's just flattened. Everything inside there is gone. There's a few little greens way in the back corner where the geese are just sitting. But for the most part, they've destroyed all growth in there, which is cool. That's kind of what we want to be able to plant some vegetables and, and get our garden going. As always, thanks for watching. I'll get more updates up, you know, when I have updates to put up. And please like and comment and if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and just click that button. And we'll be seeing you again soon.